Chris, what is our first main topic today? Our first topic comes from Oliver Whitmer. Hey, John, while doing an interview on the red carpet, Amber Midthunder, who starred in Prey, was asking if there was going to be a sequel. And she kind of hinted that there is. I know you weren't sure if there would be one or not, but do you interpret her as saying there will be and do you think there should be? Thanks. All right, Oliver, thanks a lot for saying that in. And listen, I'm, I'll be the first one to tell you. When they first talked about Prey at CinemaCon a couple years ago, I was like, to quote Chris Carr, for why? <laughs> really? Really? You're going to go try to go back to the Predator franchise? How's that been working out? Spoiler alert, not well. And I just thought it was, and really? How are people living in that old Western time period supposed to be able to fight Predator? It, it was just, I just all around thought it was a bad idea. I admit it, I did. Now, the trailer started to look good to me, and, and, and it started to build my enthusiasm a little bit. But nothing prepared me for once I saw the movie, and I was floored by it. I absolutely loved it. I came out of it saying, and I still believe it to this day, I think it is easily the best Predator movie outside of the original. I, I really do. I, I just thought it was wonderful. It was its own movie, but very much in tune with the franchise. And Amber Midthunder was a revelation. She was fantastic in it. I love the dynamic between her and her brother and like just all this stuff I thought was great. I thought it was great world building, had a great time. But when the question started coming up about whether or not they should do a sequel, I was like, well, yeah, I don't know. Is What's there left to do? I mean, the one guy came, got his ass kicked and now we moved on. But when you have the success that it had, you got to talk about it. And sure enough, I think it was on the red carpet of the Critics' Choice Awards. Uh, it was the reporter from Variety stopped Amber Midthunder and asked her, hey, are we going to get a Prey sequel? And this is what she had to say. She said the following. I don't have a date for you. This is not an announcement. She was being very coy, by the way, when she's speaking. You got to see the video. This is not an announcement, but I'm not saying it's not. We talk all the time about a lot of things, and that's probably one. I'm ready. I love that experience. I love that movie, and I would be happy to, you know, see where else we can take it. And that, of course, that was Amber Midthunder. Guys, I have to stress, if you can find the video for it of her actually talking about this, she's like kind of, she's the only, she's just stopping short of going, like that's that's the only thing she didn't do. For those of you listening to the podcast, I just made a big wink. That's all she didn't do. But she was basically saying to the world, like, you're asking me how did I interpret her words? She's saying there's going to be a sequel. Should there be a sequel? I often talk about sequels needing at least one of two things. Number one, which is what most people think about, which is, does the story kind of ask for a next chapter? right? That's what most people normally focus on. And I would say in the course of, in the case of Prey, no, the story is not asking for another chapter, to be honest. It was a great movie, started and ended. But I believe there is a second thing that can really hook people into a sequel that is often overlooked. And that is, do I want to spend two more hours with that character? I, I said that about, um, you know, uh, the Hangover. Now, Hangover 2 didn't work out to be very good, but when they were coming out with Hangover 2, it's like, you know, do they need to do another Hangover? No, they don't. But I want to hang out with those characters yeah. some more. But, like, the only reason Supernatural lasted 15 seasons is not because it had Pulitzer Prize or winning writing. It was, I loved the characters. And every week I just wanted to hang out with the characters. You can't overlook that. And I, do I want to see Amber Midthunder trying to work out a problem with a Predator again? Yes, I do. <laughs> Does the story ask for it? No, but I want to go into a movie theater and see that again. And I'll tell you what, I ain't going to go straight to Hulu this time. They do a sequel. This one, this one's going theatrical. I'll tell you that right now. Anyway, Chris, you hear Amber mid thunders comments here. Do you think she's implying that there is indeed one? Am I reading too much into it? And the bigger question, should they do a sequel to pray? Yes, 
and yes. I mean, <laughs> I, I was honestly surprised that this wasn't on either of your top 10 lists because you guys loved this movie so, it was, so much. I, I had to think about it. it I was, did. It's a phenomenal, phenomenal film. And she is incredible. <clears throat> She's such a force. I'm so excited to see her in the Avatar The Last Airbender series as well as Princess Yue. I think she's going to be incredible. But I mean, this was a very, very well-received film. So why wouldn't you do a sequel to it? It's just leaving money on the table. And again, why wouldn't you do a theatrical release too? Because people loved this movie. People were wondering why it wasn't in theaters after they first started doing screenings of it. So I think she absolutely is going to do a sequel. Why wouldn't you? I want it. Y'all want it. Let's do it. And Rob, you could almost make this movie with the Jason Blum system of movie making because mm -hmm. what are your sets? Uh, a forest. <laughs> right. Maybe eight or nine characters, you know, a, a guy in a costume. Uh, there were some visual effects, but you can make this fairly inexpensively. This is not a movie that would need to make $500 million at the box office to break even or anything. I don't know. What do you think about no, that? No, I think, I, look, I really like this movie a great deal. I thought it was a terrific reinvigoration of the Predator franchise. I mean, I could see, John, just off the top of my head. So what if the Predators, you know, they hunt all over the galaxy, right? And they keep tabs. If somebody gets their ass kicked, they're like, oh, here's another place we go back to. Because we raise the, the difficulty level <laughs> on the advertisement yeah, for that game reserve. So so what if, what if the Predators go around and they, like, gather six aliens from different worlds and they come and they deposit them in one place and it happens to be earth's time and then they bring six hunter predators they've got their their six biggest bosses to fight and then they've got six predators and they figure this is a pretty good hunting area we got it's all outside you stay in the forest and so she has to deal with a bunch of alien creatures that they have to figure out how to work together against the predators you know same thing i'd watch that it's it's the Magnificent Seven and Battle Beyond the Stars versus Predators. Now I, I don't want to get into the habit of writing the sequel. In right, my head, of course. But, but in mean, my another, mind, I'm just like, if you had to do something. But another approach could be, okay, guess what? Now her people know about this. Right. And they got to figure out well, there's one, there could be more, and they prepare for it. And I like your idea. They send like instead of a one solo hunter, maybe three of them come. But it's like several tribes of people fighting against like three or four predators. I mean, that could be pretty damn or, fun too. Or the predators get to pick their favorite combatants and team up with them. So she has to team up with a predator <laughs> against other predators and their teammates. Yeah, God, I love this movie. Anyway, guys, question <laughs> is for you. What do you think? I mean, I, I, do you agree with me that like story-wise, this isn't asking for another thing, but no. I want to go back and see these characters again. Maybe you feel the same, maybe you don't. Whatever you guys think, Jump on down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. Guys, we want to thank a sponsor of this video, Mint Mobile. If saving more and spending less is one of your top goals for 2023, why are you still paying insane amounts of money every month for your phone bill? Switching to Mint Mobile is the easiest way to save money this year. As the first company to sell premium wireless service online only, Mint Mobile lets you order from home and save a ton with phone plans starting at just $15 a month. Guys, I have told you before that when I was on one of the major phone carriers, I was spending literally three times as much every month and switching to Mint Mobile couldn't have been easier. So for people just looking to save some extra money this year, Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for just 15 bucks a month. All plans come with unlimited talk and text plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. You can use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and switch easily in just minutes with eSIM. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash campia. That's mintmobile.com slash campia. Cut your wireless bill to just 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash campia.